please note that the following views and the opinions expressed on this program are not necessarily the views nor the opinions of the Master Force Group. YouTube.com, Free America Radio Network, our sponsors, our partners, and MFG is a private society. Nothing here is ever to be construed as hate, medical, nor legal advice. Don't attempt anything without the gloves. Freemasons run the country! You. Operation of trust is essential because now you're operating in the private sector. So when we say in the private, we mean operation of trust and trust law and trust application of law. And so what that is, it's actually the highest jurisdiction. So you've just elevated yourself, not only um, on the um, record, say with the corporate government, um, but also in your consciousness. And so it's, it's pretty magnificent in how the spiritual world and the higher law replicates itself in the third dimensional realm. And then we can use practical tools to actually navigate in this new uh, comfort zone. When I think of the first trust, I think of a covenant. A covenant is a sacred vow or a sacred contract, if you will. So there's a saying, it's one of the maxims of equity equity being synonymous with trust, equity also being synonymous with the word fair. So when you're dealing in a court of equity, you're in theory dealing in a court of fairness. So there's a saying and it goes like this, everything is trust and there is nothing that is not trust. Everything is God and there is nothing that is not God. So when I think of that first trust, that first covenant, that's with our creator. And our creator granted us dominion over the land, the air, and the water. Each one has its own rules of operation, if you will. So when you're dealing in the water jurisdiction, that's corporate law. Then as we learn, we, we were out to sea and we come into standing on solid ground. We first need to learn how to crawl and then walk. And we're standing on solid ground. And that's the supreme law of the land. So that's common law, which gives you a little bit more foundation and solid ground. So that's a beautiful thing. And then of course, the air jurisdiction being above the land and the water is the highest of the jurisdictions. That air jurisdiction is a form. It's actually a law form. That first covenant is when God entrusted us with dominion over the land, the air and the water. Now, that is a sacred mm, privilege, if you will, a gift that was granted to us by our creator, this high level of responsibility to be stewards of the land, the air, the water, the creatures, right? And all that is under God. That's up to us. I mean, that's a huge responsibility. That's trust. That's the ultimate trust right there. So when we think of the law form of trust, we think of a covenant, a sacred covenant, but it's a two-way street. God granted us this level of trust, and we in turn hopefully will trust God to know how to operate the trust, know who the players are in the trust, and mm, trust that if we don't know the way, that a way will be provided. So trust is esoteric in nature. But well, when you think of trust, I mean, for me, I think of relationship. We build trust. We earn trust. It's not tangible, right? And yet when we put our most valuable items in trust, they're protected because they're protected by God. It's the highest elevated place where we can put our most valuable, precious belongings. And it can be something tangible that you can put in a trust or something not tangible. So you could put a poem or an idea in a trust, oh. or you can put a family heirloom. You can put your jewels and gems in your house and your property. So um, trust is basically a sacred covenant. And some people forget the sacred nature of it. Um, there's many that have used it for nefarious purposes. You can actually put your business into your trust to protect it. And you yes. can operate finances. I mean, it really opens up a whole nother world of how you view these things in which you navigate and how you can um, shield them with a lot more lawful protection. Mm -hmm. It's true. So um, a great story is the gentleman who was a, a chiropractor and he was being harassed by the board. Uh, for all sorts of reasons. And he was being fined unlawfully and just basically harassed. I mean, just huge, very successful business. He decided to turn his 
chiropractic business into a PMA. And now he's basically become untouchable, which is amazing because in his private membership association, he no longer calls himself a chiropractor. He's actually surrendered his license and he's not practicing using um, the title of doctor. He's a holistic health practitioner and now he works on friends and his friends are the members of his holistic health wellness center. And so because it operates from the private, you have to be a member to be able to participate in some of those healing modalities that he shares with his friends. And it's turned into a very successful venture. And he's finally gotten the, um, the board of, I mean, you name it, which board has been after him. All of the, just fill in the blank of uh, who you can imagine who would be trying to harass him for fines and whatnot. They just want him to pay into a system that he used to think he had to be a part of. And then we realize now that everything is an offer. And we realize that we can operate as professionals in our areas of expertise, um, but we don't have to buy into a system that we aren't in agreement with. Right now, I think they were saying that like Elon Musk or, or some famous that we all know of is, is like the richest in the mm -hmm. world. And that's not even close to being true. Right. Um, under my estimation, from what I'm aware, it's the Rothschilds. And apparently they have upwards to $533 trillion. And the reason why nobody knows about it or nobody's reporting on it is because it's all in a trust. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these super elite, super, super wealthy people that we never hear about their money or anything, mm -hmm. they op they're operating solely in the trust when it comes to this. So it, it shrouds them with a whole nother level of mm -hmm. um, invisibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and why is that? Oh, well, I don't think they want people to know. <laughs> <laughs> because it's private. It's a private. Exactly. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's nobody's business. You see? So they're yeah. very clever. And yet um, people get angry and they say, oh, you know, it's all this nefarious, dark, secret meetings. And it's like, well, they have actually the right under operation of trust to keep those meetings private because it's nobody's business. So when we go into a court and we don't know who we are, let's say, I don't know, I'm the beneficiary of this public charitable trust. I just go into one of these courtrooms and I'm trying to stand and say, well, I'm standing upon my rights and the constitution was there to protect my rights. Now, the reason I would get thrown out or laughed at or possibly thrown in the slammer for contempt of the court is because if I go in there in a private corporation meeting, now remember public law is owned by a private company. I go in there and I pretend to know what the rule book says. I pretend to know what the accounting is. And I'm saying my constitution and my rights, I'm speaking on matters that I know nothing of. And so when they when you go in for a hearing, they're hearing to see if you know who you are. And if you start yelling constitution and fraud, that will just bring up the bile in the judge and the clerk of the court. They're, the vomit, they start going, oh, here we go, more of this patriot nonsense. And yet you feel so convicted. I know I'm right and I know my rights have been squashed and blah, 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 blah. But if, because we, the people, well, many of us don't know who we are yet. We're getting to know who we are because it's the time of revelation. It's the big reveal. Once we realize, okay, I am a child of God, heir to the kingdom of heaven. And that whole world, that corporate world and those corporate laws is the whole world of commerce. That's Babylon. I don't have any business in that world. It really is a private corporate meeting. And I can't go in there to think that I'm going to know how to speak or know what their operation of trust looks like. So I'm better off. I don't understand anything that's going on in this courtroom. And remember your viewers, whenever you hire a lawyer or an attorney, you're literally giving up your rights because the judge will deem you to be incompetent. They see you as one you can't speak. You are so stupid. You have to hire somebody else to speak on speak your behalf. For you because you're a, a dead uh, legal entity. 
Mm -hmm. Because you're identifying as the all caps name or your straw man. Yeah. But we didn't know what we didn't know. And now we're learning. But the thing about it is when patriots come awake and alive, they get so angry and they want to fight, fight, fight for the right, right, rights. And I'm saying, "Uh, uh, uh, turn the other cheek. It's none of your business what goes on in that world. When you step in as beneficiary and you start recognizing, hey, I know who I am. And gee, I'm not falling for that crap anymore. So I'm opting out. Thank you anyway. And you do it with honor and grace and decency and forgive them, Father. They know not what they do, right? Or in some cases, we talked about this earlier. Forgive them, Father, for they know what they do and they do it anyway. Um, Some of them do know what's up and some of them don't. So you just, you do your best to stay in your lane and be cool And try not to engage because everything is an offer. And when a road pirate or an agent of the state is trying to come out of their lane, come into your lane to harass you, to um, rock your world, um, interrupt your peace, it's very hard to not engage. It's it's like somebody's gone out of their way to pick a fight with you and you're supposed to just stand there and go, oh, forgive them they know not what they do it's like okay uh we're going to be very much tested so just see if you can not engage recognize that people are at where they're at an agent of the state is not going to know this information most of them won't and so if you go to stand for your rights on the side of the road you're going to be seen as a combative type and it it will be so easy to frame you as being that because if you're arguing with what their point of view is, you are being combative, whether they started it or not, right? Being a good mom, it doesn't matter who started it. You're both guilty because you're, you're participating in it. So in those cases, what I would recommend is simply, you know, be kind. There's some processes through a process of surrender, There's another process through uh, rescission. You have 72 hours to rescind any and all offers to contract. We don't fall under a jurisdiction of statutory codes and rules and laws. However, when that bill comes and you're not paying it, you're you're probably going to get challenged. I mean, that's just the nature of the beast. So might as well set yourself up to have your land in trust. And it's just one more degree of separation. Um, My best friend has his property in trust. He lent his car to a woman who crashed it. I mean, horrible. She almost killed somebody. Like it was a mess, right? So the insurance went after her insurance company, went after his insurance company. And then he gets a call from a lawyer that says, hey, even though both the insurance companies have paid out max, there's so many damages with this woman that she hit that they're, they're going to do a deep dive. They're going to try to come after you and go after your assets. He's like, Oh my God. Well, guess what? He had his property in his home in trust. That's right. And a lot of these very wealthy people, it's Mm -hmm. like, they don't own anything. Like really nothing is under their name. Yeah. People try to come after them. You know, it's a way to protect their assets. The, state shouldn't have any ability to look at your trust. It's a private trust matter after all. Anything in trust is private. What types of trust are there? Well, there's many types of trust, but the two that I like to focus on and that everyone should know about is irrevocable and revocable. Mm. And the only kind of trust I would ever get involved in is an irrevocable trust. Because a revocable trust, you can basically mm, uncreate it. And if you're going to create something in trust, you're going, you're entering into the world of the living. Now, if you can demolish it, then you can go into the world of the dead. So I like to stay in the land of the living or in the living trust, the irrevocable trust. You can make changes to it as you go. You can appoint different trustees. You can restructure the trust. You can collapse it and rebuild it. But I like to keep it all in the land of the living because I just don't really see the point of the other. If you can create it and then destroy it, what was the point of it at all in the first place? Mm. Speaking of trust of the living, 
Um, mm -hmm. I believe this is where some would call a pure trust or a God trust. And I've heard that this trust, um, it seems a bit more occult. Could you elaborate more on this type of trust? It is. It is a cult because I can create it in my backyard <laughs> and I can put in it whatever I want. I don't have to record it on a public record. Mm -hmm. I can share the information or not. And I mean, it, it seems so elementary. Like I could be a kindergartner and open up a notebook and put some drawings in it. And that can be my trust. And we can do that as adults. And I think it's just the concept of having a trust and knowing that your most precious, most valuable items are placed in it. And that's, it elevates your consciousness. It elevates you from a pauper, somebody who doesn't have any standing or status and it elevates you into that higher child of God, heir to the kingdom of heaven. Lost at sea? Serve lawful notice, unrebutted affidavit of truth, living man status, in law. See links, for UK remedy. Now you have it on the record that you're a private man or woman. And you're living, you're, you're in the land of the living, the spirit-filled woman, spirit-filled man, who has nothing to do with these corpse orations. Because equity, meaning fair, but it can also mean value. So it's you put your valuables. It's a holding trust. That's where you put your valuables. I'd put my car in there. Nice. Anything you own outright, equity holding. Do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share with us about the trusts? Yes. Put your valuables in trust. Put your land in trust. Put your property in trust. Guess what is your property? Your labor. Mm. Guess what is your property? Your body. Right? So, you know, uh, for your viewers who haven't looked into the repudiation process yet, it's a fabulous experience to be able to reclaim that which you already are, but you're claiming it on the record. And if you have a basic knowledge of trust, I mean, even just this video alone can equip you with so many insights that when you look into the repudiation process, you'll start recognizing the operation of trust in the paperwork. And you'll start seeing it everywhere. You'll start recognizing, wow, everything really is trust and there's nothing that is not trust. And so develop your understanding of what it is and put everything that's valuable to you in trust, because that's what the, um, the richie riches of the world have done to protect their families and their assets. And that's what we can do. And I think that what is what was intended for us, but in the world as it has been, uh, we've been asleep at the wheel in survival mode, many of us, and for a long time. And now we're waking up and we're getting back to this higher level of responsibility. And then also going back to, um, if you open your Bibles and you read the first five books of Moses as a trust indenture, it shows you who the trustees are. It shows you the operation of trust, who the players are, who the beneficiaries are. And it also shows uh, in code what are laws and rules of operation in the physical realm were intended to be. And if you just kind of look at it with new eyes, you might have fun with it because it's not so literal. And I used to read the Bible very literally and I wasn't grasping it. And now if you read it in code, you recognize, oh, this is the operation of the trust. Oh, what am I supposed to do? Okay, well, I'm supposed to be responsible. I'm supposed to know the law. I'm supposed to uphold it. I'm supposed to hold my trustee accountable. I'm supposed to protect and defend the trust and look out for my fellow man and be a good overseer. I love uh, what one of our team members, what he says. He says, when you're the trustee is when you're sowing and tilling the soil. 
Mm. And when you're the beneficiary is when you're eating the fruit. So <laughs> that way you know what hat to wear at what time. So I love that. And there's no mistake that there's a Bible in every courtroom. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. It's the foundation. Like it really is. I see in so many ways being the foundation for law and it's all, it's all in there. I just want to establish the main positions that play out in a trust. So you have your trustees, which if I'm not mistaken, are the fiduciary of the trust. So they have the utmost responsibility and duty to the trust, uh, the beneficiaries that are the ones that benefit from the trust. And is there another position in the trust? Yes, the grantor, some call the settlor. The grantor is the creator, that which creates controls. It's a lot of work being a trustee. So if you are entrusted to be a trustee, take it, that position very seriously. Record your minutes, do your books, um, dot your I's, cross your T's, and have some checks and balances uh, just so that you make sure that you're squeaky clean on your side. You don't want that to come back to bite you later. Most people don't have time to read Black's Law 4 and Black's Law 6 and Bouvier's Dictionary. And people get really bogged down and overwhelmed in the chaotic, endless sea of legalese. I am not a corporation. I am not a legal fiction. I am a people or a spirit-filled woman. So little things like that are big things, especially when it comes to the law. It is so important that we learn this knowledge because knowledge is power. And it's been a personal um, example that I've been living in my life. The more that I learn and I evolve, the less that I am being taken advantage of. So continue on your journey to learn and just one step at a time every day, it will get better and better. I promise you. I'm sending you all so much love and light. And until the next video. Freemasons run the country. Ew.